Hello friends, in this series of lectures, we have been discussing the various types of circuits, the voltage and current laws and their application to circuits. Today in this lecture, we shall be talking about the circuit analysis methods. These methods based on Ohm's law and Kirchhoff's laws are particularly useful in the analysis of multiple loop circuits having two or more voltage or current sources. These methods discussed here can be used alone or in conjunction with the techniques covered in other lectures. With experience, you will learn which method is best for a particular problem or you may develop a preference for one of them. In the branch current method, you will apply Kirchhoff's laws to solve for current in various branches of a multiple loop circuit. A loop is a complete current path within a circuit. In the loop current method, you will solve for loop currents rather than branch currents. In the node voltage method, you will find the voltages at the independent nodes in a circuit. Branch current method. The branch current method is a circuit analysis method using Kirchhoff's voltage and current laws to find the current in each branch of a circuit by generating simultaneous equations. Once you know the branch currents, you can determine voltages. Figure here shows a circuit that will be used as the basic model throughout this lecture to illustrate each of the three circuit analysis methods. In this circuit, there are only two closed loops. A loop is a complete current path within a circuit and you can view a set of closed loops as a set of window panes where each window pane represents one loop. Also, there are four nodes as indicated by the letters A, B, C and D. A node is a point where two or more components are connected. A branch is a path that connects two nodes and there are three branches in this circuit, one containing R1, one containing R2 and the third one containing R3. The general steps used in applying the branch current method are step 1 assign a current in each circuit branch in an arbitrary direction. Step 2 show the polarities of the resistor voltages according to the assigned branch current directions. Step 3 apply Kirchhoff's voltage law around each closed loop. Step 4 apply Kirchhoff's current law at the minimum number of nodes so that all branch currents are included. Step 5 Solve the equations resulting from step 3 and 4 for the branch current values. These steps demonstrated here are with the help of this figure. First step the branch current I1, I2 and I3 are assigned in the direction shown. Don't worry about the actual current directions at this point. Step second, the polarities of the voltage drops across R1, R2 and R3 are indicated in the figure according to the assigned current directions. Step three, Kirchhoff's voltage law applied to the two loops gives the following equations where the resistance values are the coefficients for the unknown currents where equation 1 is R1 I1 plus R2 I2 minus Vs1 is equal to 0 for loop 1. Equation 2 is R2 into I2 plus R3 into I3 minus Vs2 is equal to 0 for loop 2. 
Fourth step is Kirchhoff's current law is applied to node A, including all branch currents as follows. Equation 3 becomes I1 plus I2 plus I3 comes out to be 0. The negative sign indicates that I2 is out of the node. Fifth and the last step, the three equations must be solved for the three unknown currents I1, I2 and I3. Loop current method. In the loop current method, also known as the mesh current method, you will work with loop currents instead of branch currents. An ammeter placed in a given branch will measure the branch current. Unlike branch currents, loop currents are mathematical quantities rather than actual physical currents that are used to make circuit analysis somewhat easier than with the branch current method. A systematic method of loop analysis is given in the following steps. Step 1. Although direction of an assigned loop current is arbitrary, we will assign a current in the clockwise direction around each non-redundant closed loop for consistency. This may not be the actual current direction, but it does not matter. The number of loop current assignments must be sufficient to include current through all components in the circuit. Step 2. Indicate the voltage drop polarities in each loop based on the assigned current directions. Step 3. Apply Kirchhoff's voltage law around each closed loop. When more than one loop current passes through a component, include its voltage drop. This results in one equation for each loop. Step 4. Using substitution, solve the resulting equations for the loop currents. First, the loop current IA and IB are assigned in the clockwise direction as shown in figure. A loop current could be assigned around the outer perimeter of the circuit, but this would be redundant since IA and IB already pass through all of the components. Second, the polarities of the voltage drops across R1, R2 and R3 are shown based on the loop current directions. Notice that IA and IB are in opposite directions through R2 because R2 is common to both loops. Therefore, two voltage polarities are indicated. In reality, the R2 current cannot be separated into two parts, but remember that the loop currents are basically mathematical quantities used for analysis purposes. The polarities of the voltage sources are fixed and are not affected by the current assignments. Third, Kirchhoff's voltage law applied to the two loops result in the following two equations R1 into IA plus R2 into IA minus IB is equal to Vs1 for loop A. R3 into IB plus R2 into IB minus IA is equal to minus Vs2 for loop B. Notice that IA is positive in loop A and IB is positive in loop B. Fourth, the like terms in the equations are combined and rearranged into standard form for convenient solution so that they have the same position in each equation. That is, the IA term is first and the IB term is second. The equations are rearranged in the following form. Once the loop currents are evaluated, all of the branch currents can be determined. R1 
plus R2 into IA minus R2 into IB is equal to Vs1 for loop A minus R2 into IA plus R2 plus R3 into IB is equal to minus Vs1 for loop B. Notice that in the loop current method only two equations are required for the same circuit that required three equations in the branch current method. These two equations follow a form to make loop analysis easier. Referring to these two equations, notice that for loop A, the total resistance in the loop R1 plus R2 is multiplied by IA that is its loop current. Also in the loop A equation, the resistance common to both loops that is R2 is multiplied by the other loop current IB and subtracted from the first term. The same form is seen in the loop B equation except that the terms have been rearranged. For these observations, a concise rule for applying step 1 to 4 is sum of resistors in loop times loop current minus each resistor common to both loops times associated adjacent loop current equals source voltage in the loop. Circuits with more than two loops. The loop current method can be systematically applied to circuits with any number of loops. Of course, the more loops there are, the more difficult is the solution. But calculators have greatly simplified solving simultaneous equations. Most circuits that you will encounter will not have more than three loops. Keep in mind that the loop currents are not the actual physical currents but are mathematical quantities assigned for analysis purposes. A widely used circuit that you have already encountered is the Wheatstone bridge. The Wheatstone bridge was originally designed as a standalone measuring instrument but has largely been replaced with other instruments. However, the Wheatstone bridge circuit is incorporated in automated measuring instruments and is widely used in the scale industry and in other measurement applications. One method for solving the bridge parameters which directly leads to finding the current in each arm of the bridge and the load current is to write loop equations for the bridge. This figure here shows a Wheatstone bridge with three loops. Another useful three loop circuit is the bridged T circuit. A loaded resistive bridged T is shown in figure. While the circuit is primarily applied in AC filter circuits using reactive components, it is introduced here to illustrate the three loop circuit solution. Resistors will often be in kilo ohm or even mega ohm. So the coefficients for simultaneous equations will become quite large if they are shown explicitly in solving equations. To simplify entering and solving equations with kilo ohm, it is common practice to drop the kilo ohm in the equations and recognize that the unit for current is milliampere if the voltage is volts. Node voltage method. Another method of analysis of multiple loop circuits is called the node voltage method. It is based on finding the voltages at each node in the circuit using Kirchhoff's current law. The general steps for the node voltage method of circuit analysis are Step 1. Determine the number of nodes. Step 2. Select one node as a reference. 
all voltages will be relative to the reference node. Assign voltage designations to each node where the voltage is unknown. Step 3. Assign currents at each node where the voltage is unknown except at the reference node. The directions are arbitrary. Step 4. Apply Kirchhoff's current law to each node where currents are assigned. Step 5. Express the current equations in terms of voltages and solve the equations for the unknown node voltages using Ohm's law. We will use this figure to illustrate the general approach to node voltage analysis. First, establish the nodes. In this case, there are four nodes as indicated. Second, let us use node B as the reference. Think of it as the circuit's reference ground. Node voltages C and D are already known to be the source voltages. The voltage at node A is the only unknown. It is designated as VA. Third, arbitrarily assign the branch currents at node A as indicated in the figure. Fourth, the Kirchhoff's current equation at node A is I1 plus I2 plus I3 and is equal to 0. Fifth, express the currents in terms of circuit voltages using Ohm's law. I1 is equal to V1 upon R1 and is again equal to Vs1 minus Va over R1. I2 is equal to V2 upon R2 and is equal to Va upon R2. I3 is equal to V3 upon R3 and is again equal to Vs3 minus Va over R3. Substituting these terms into the current equation yields Vs1 minus Va upon R1 minus Va upon R2 plus Vs2 minus Va over R3 is equal to 0. The only unknown is Va. So, solve the single equation by combining and rearranging terms. Once you know the voltage, you can calculate all branch currents. Node voltage method for a Wheatstone bridge. As shown in this figure, the node voltage method can be applied to a Wheatstone bridge. Node D is usually selected as the reference node and node A has the same potential as the source voltage. When setting up the equations for the two unknown node voltages that is B and C, it is necessary to specify a current direction as described in the journal steps. The direction of current in RL is dependent on the bridge resistances. If the assigned direction is incorrect, it will show up as a negative current in the solution. Kirchhoff's current law is then written for each of the unknown nodes. Each current is then expressed in terms of node voltages using Ohm's law as at node B, I1 plus IL is equal to I2. So, VA minus VB upon R1 plus VC minus VB upon RL is equal to VB upon R2. At node C, I3 plus IL is equal to I4. So, VA minus VC upon R3 is equal to VC minus VB upon RL plus VC upon R4. The equations are put in standard form 
and can be solved with any of the methods you have learnt. Note voltage method for the bridged T circuit. Applying the node voltage method to the bridged T circuit also results in two equations with two unknowns. As in the case of Wheatstone bridge, there are four nodes as shown in figure. Node D is the reference and node A is the source voltage. So, the two unknown voltages are at nodes C and D. The effect of a load resistor on the circuit is usually the most important question. So, the voltage at node C is the focus. A calculator solution of the simultaneous equations is simplified for analyzing the effect of various loads because only the equation for node C is affected when the load changes. So friends, this brings us to the end of our discussion in this lecture and therefore we sum up. The circuit analysis methods based on Ohm's law and Kirchhoff's laws are particularly useful in the analysis of multiple loop circuits having two or more voltage or current sources. The branch current method is based on Kirchhoff's voltage law and Kirchhoff's current law. The loop current method is based on Kirchhoff's voltage law. A loop current is not necessarily the actual current in a branch. The node voltage method is based on Kirchhoff's current law. So that is it for today. In the next lecture, we shall be discussing about network analysis theorems. Thank you very much.